Spain are people that would rather blow up the world, literally blow up the world, than behave properly and give control to people who have some competency at doing the job. So that's insanity. Now, I, I don't think I need to say any more about that because there's a plenty of, of information out there as to what we mean by insanity in that sense. A parasite is, uh, a, in terms of a person, is a person that does not of themselves um, create anything of value or contribute anything of value but feeds off the energy of others and feeds off the creativity and honour of others and in the process damages the host by causing such things as recessions, depressions, foreclosures, job losses. Now, I have chosen to use those terms to describe a minority that hides within a broader group that are sometimes otherwise called Jewish, for example, or Catholic, or Christian, or the leadership of Muslim countries, because all of them have connections. Now, I don't want to, to tar every Catholic as a parasite or a member of the Roman cult, because they're not. And if you start using those broad terms to describe a very small minority that hide and use everyone else's human shields, then in fact what you're doing is you're allowing the parasite to defend itself by accusing you of being a hate speecher or an anti-Semite or someone that promotes negativity. So I'm using very precise language to describe a mental illness, a way of living and behaviour without using terms that quite frankly are designed by these people themselves to hide and protect who they are. And that's why I use them. Okay, uh, that was a good explanation, Frank. Thank you. On uh, back to uh, membership here, there's a question that came earlier: Is it possible to reserve the right of membership to one heaven until some point, as uh, one is more knowledgeable about the subject? In other words, uh, reserving it for someone else or another family member. Well, here's the really good thing. No one, I, I hope, would ever consider um, the divine creator or God or Allah, whatever name you want to call the great spirit, as incompetent. Because if you did, you'd, you'd be wrong. The, the divine is perfectly competent and can never be declared incompetent. And because your divine trust and your divine spirit, otherwise your soul, is part of the divine, your soul can never be declared incompetent. So the most important part of you, your spirit, is perfectly competent, perfectly competent. The question of flesh and learning is, is different. That's a, that's a journey. So under one heaven, every spirit, and this is just stating the obvious. I mean, if, if the spirit is part of the divine, of course it's part of the divine. If heaven is a way of describing a divine environment where the where the collective spirits uh, share their knowledge of life and death and, and everything else that comes with living experience, then, then this is something that uh, can't be you know, put on hold and has nothing to do with competence. So the short answer to that is uh, you are a member of One Heaven. You've always been a member of heaven, you always will be a member of heaven. But if your flesh chooses not to, and I've had the experience this week of, of, of flesh choosing, saying, I don't want to be a member of heaven because they are angry, that, that's an entirely different situation. And uh, 
um, you know, I respect flesh, whether it's being angry or not angry and competent or not competent. But the short answer is you are always a member of one heaven because your spirit is always competent and was always part of the divine, is always part of the divine. All right? Okay, thank you, Frank. Um, next question on the chat is, uh, are there EDPs just for the court uh, on the way or being developed? Can you say that again? Sorry. Are there EDPs, ecclesiastical deep holes, that are specific for the court, uh, and are they on the way? Yeah, I was hoping that it would be ready today. It's not, so I'm working on that. And definitely by next Thursday, uh, by next call next Thursday, if not before, there will be a specific ecclesiastical deed on the system specifically for court. And, and what it will be is it will be a deed that references that you have undertaken your claim of right through the vital statistics and it will make clear you are challenging the title and therefore the jurisdiction by which the court claims. So it will be specific to shutting down the case from the beginning. Now, there is not going to be a follow-up on the that one EDP. It's a one-off. If the court says no, then um, the, the dishonour process is through the vital statistics. Um, there will be, if, if a court says no, then it'll go straight to a great writ process probably. But uh, that'll be ready, I'm hoping, well, it will definitely be ready by Thursday, but it could well be ready before then, okay? Okay, thank you, Frank. So you'll be developing a flow chart as to what great writ does with what uh, condition or process or, or, or situation? Absolutely. But there's a lot of, of, there's a lot of workshopping that, you know, we'll be doing and others involved will be doing over the next um, week to make sure and this is going to be an evolving process because for example I was given today some great background on the history of some of the great writs and they really need to tie together we're trying to bring back something that was a good thing in common law before they took it out which was there are certain circumstances one could issue a writ to uh, reclaim and restore a right and that's what a writ is a writ is a writer so right so, yes, there will be detail, but it will be an evolving process as well. So it won't all be finished by next Thursday, but it will certainly be evolving over the next few weeks. Yeah. Okay, great, Frank. Thank you. Uh, on the uh, IDs uh, example, uh, why does the example ID card expire on the Day of Judgment? Um, that was an early idea and I, I would I would probably say that that it, it it creates the wrong impression it was never intended but now that you say it 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 could be used and could be interpreted wrongly there was there was no ulterior motive it was merely that a card any card being issued by definition a card has an expiry date so I would suggest that that's something that can be updated and reviewed and probably will review it um, to a different date, give it a 10-year date or something so that's not, not relevant. All right, so that's a fair point and we'll see that changed. Very good. Thank you, Frank. Uh, let's see. Uh, can EIN for the trust number provide a way to administrate all of the benefits to you? And, and there have been some questions about uh, going through the process. Does it do away with uh, benefits that you might have like from Social Security or as a uh, veteran or as a widow to a veteran and things like that? In their system, they have the ability to redirect their numbers and match them up any way you like. Now, I've worked with large banks and I've worked with government institutions and they, they're they not the world's greatest data managers, as you're probably well aware. But it is possible for them on one-off cases to reconnect and, and, and re-divert one system with another, which is why we're giving them a trust number. So it is possible that the EIN could be used in their system as the master number by which they rematch all these benefits. Absolutely yes. Will they do it? 
Well, we're seeing varieties of, of reactions in the system. The system is really sick, and we're seeing a variety of reactions. So I would say um, it's, it's going to be something that has to be taken uh, as it flows. So I, I, can't, I can't give you an answer and say, will they do it? Could they do it? Yes. Will they do it? Well, we can only ask. Yeah, we can only suggest. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Frank. Uh, back to the phone lines. We have Tiber on the phone. Hi. 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 Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, I started this whole process because I heard of the prepaid in life and the uh, birth certificate worth millions of dollars. Get that thing A for B, get a bond in play, pay for all your debt. Okay, it's not working. I still got a car debt. Uh, the bonds aren't being put out. So I'm wondering what's my solution for a car debt? Because we know there is no money in the world. They don't have a true contract. They got a bilateral contract and force of gun to steal my property. So that's my one question. Where's our remedy in all this? Does it come down later? Do we get the, the lien might not come through? So, you know. And that's yeah, but I, but Han, Han sec, you, you started by saying my my birth certificate's worth millions of dollars. Yeah, because we have uh, people that are a for their birth certificate with the Treasury of the United States, and they've turned them in for $100 million, and then they a for the You know, I have one document. He did it for $300 million U.S., but he got it on the PPSA for $100 million Canadian. But the financial minister wouldn't give him access to that bond. So he's still... Sure, but that's just because it's all done in the Roman system. But remember, you're, you're talking about other people's procedures, and accepted for value is not something that we... We will be talking about set off in, in showing set off, which which is very similar to A for V. However, it makes a big distinction. It's talking about your standing as a trustee of a trust separate to the system and not using their property and their rules and abusing them as as you're not supposed to in their system. So you just described a whole intro there of things that you've done on other people's remedy. So I'm not too sure how you can judge the ecclesiastical deeds based on other people's remedy that you've been following. No, I was just wondering, okay, sure. since that remedy was uh, null and void because it is in their paperwork and they're not honoring the paperwork and ignoring it all, yeah. how yeah. do we get out of this fiat cash race that they're forcing us to do every day? You know, pay your bills with this fiat cash and there are no real bills to pay, but they're forcing us to do it. And since they have your property on paper, if you don't pay them the fiat cash, they seize your property. So I'm trying to stop the car from being seized, and, and you know, I want, not, want to pay them off, but the fiat cash is not enough to make the mortgage payment and pay off the car, so I'm in a vicious circle here. So I'm wondering, uh, I, how can I get the car? Well, okay. I, I mean, three years of sweat equity into it. I don't want to sell it for cheap. And then no, 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 no. It's, it's hard. Look, the short answer is this. I mean, the guys that come to repossess your car and the people that are on the call, I mean, you talk to them about fiat money and, and anything, they'll look at you blankly and it, it'll just make you even bitter. I mean, it, once, you, once you're in the clutches of, of collection agencies, they're image trained to basically go through to the hilt and nothing you will do. But there's three things that you've covered there that are, I believe, they're, they're, they're connected, but they're also separate. Oh, okay. is, sorry about that, Frank. One is saving, one is saving your car and, 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 and surviving, which is obviously sound like an issue. How do you survive at the moment? The second is how, how do you make some money, yeah? And what kind of money options do you have? And the third is the question of emancipation. Now, do you agree that they're the three kind of broad areas that you've covered? Agreed, yes, agreed. And I didn't question? mean to be yeah. so broad on that. I just meant... Doesn't matter, that. doesn't matter. Because whatever I answer for you helps others as well. So that's what I was thinking too. So <laughs> all right. So let, let's let's start with. Can I start with the big one first? Sure, please do. Emancipation. What's happening in Tunisia at the moment? I don't watch TV. I've watched TV for four years, so I don't know. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. There's there's general uprisings in the Arab world. Now I'm not saying that they're uh, they're all noble because you know you you've got to ask yourself why did they uprise today and not yesterday and who's going to come into the government when they're moved. So I'm not saying that it's all, it's all you know, holier than thou, but the, the point I make to this, if a million Americans were fully motivated and fully knowledgeable about how they are treated and, and actually are really slaves, then a million in 300 million could, could change the whole government structure, couldn't they? 
easily. Agreed. Because 